uh, to all. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to our uh, to you all to uh, this distinguished lecture by Professor Muldidhar. As and this distinguished lecture is a part of uh, Azadi Kamrut Mahotsav. And uh, at the outset, I would first uh, request uh, Director Ma'am to felicitate Sir with the token of appreciation. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce uh, Sir first. Uh, so uh, Professor Muldidhar is uh, currently the Jawaharlal Nehru uh, Chair Professor, School of Life uh, Sciences, University of Hull. Oh, it's over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, sir uh, uh, did his BSc and MSc from Osmania University, Hyderabad, and PhD from ISC Bangalore. And uh, he was initially selected for lecturership in the School of Life Sciences at the newly founded Central University of Hyderabad in 1976. And as far as his research and academic contributions are concerned, his uh, research laboratory initiated a long range research program on water buffalo endocrinology. His laboratory had uh, developed procedures for indigenous production of buffalo hormones like FSH, LHTSH, prolactin, sensitive homologous uh, assays and heterologous biases for these hormones. And uh, besides this, uh, Professor Murlidhar was the chairman of the UGC Curriculum Development Committee of Zoology that brought out a benchmark report on MSc and BSc teaching in zoological sciences. He was the convener of the net examination and chairman of the PAC Animal Sciences of uh, DST for two terms. He has served uh, as the researcher on the research advisory committee of CCMB, IGIB, MRC, uh, NBRC, etc. And he has also served as a member of the executive council of NASI and INSA from 1998 to 2000. He is the recipient of a large number of awards and honors. Uh, he is a fellow of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, Allahabad, uh, and Indian Academy of Sciences, Bangalore. He was the recipient of the Vice Subarao Memorial Lectureship of GGS Intercrest University in 2007 and the U.S. Srivastava Memorial Lectureship of NASI in 2007. The list goes on and on. And, and uh, besides all of these, uh, Sir is an amazing teacher. I've been fortunate enough to have been taught by him. And uh, it's an honor to have you here, Sir. And I know that your lecture is going to be uh, really illuminating and enlightening for all of us. Yeah, definitely. So I would like to welcome you on the dais, sir. Right. Um, first of all, uh, great 
Ecken, der Frau Schermann, der Dirmini, der Zweifel, der Gott und der Dirmini. Before I give the lecture, a couple of points that I have said. One thing is not a little bit. We have to accept the same of data and all that. More a sociological analysis of Indian science that is equally applicable to national science. In recent years, a lot of people must have noticed the turmoil in the Western science as well as Indian science, especially in developing countries. There's a lot of ethical concern for the experts, like people who know better. There are various reasons for these unethical practices. When I analyzed it, since 10 years I've been talking about all this, I took a historical perspective and see why we have this kind of thing. Because science is a philosophy, it's a way of life. And the aim of this life, that's a philosophy, is to know the truth. And anybody who wants to know the truth cannot compromise and integrate. However, that the opposite was happening, of course, not on a large scale. Here and there, <clears throat> and I was uh, also after a number of empirical conditions. So I came to know this and I analyzed it from a sociological perspective. And being a professional teacher in a university department, therefore I make it an academic exercise and give perspective to you to what exactly is the problem. Is there any solution? Actually, I was also asked to do the same thing for other organizations like CSA and Visa uh, and other. So I will show some of those things that we will benefit. DPT also has industry that exercise, but their analysis is not comprehensive. Now, where does from a, as a university professional a teacher, what exactly are the things which provoke us to look into these things? So I will start from generalities, then I will define semantics. Because we will be using this word ethics, and we should not confuse this for moral or law to define these things. And then look at some cases. The other thing that I wish to tell you, because this is not a research seminar, you don't hear any story developing yet. I will take because this issue of ethics is a huge one. It has become a it penetrated in all aspects of science. Practicing science, funding science, government science, appointment, selection, awards, everything. Everywhere you see ethical problems. And therefore, let us learn some of these things. So, I will have a probably a series of unlinked slides. You can construct the story later because it's the only chance that we will to speak to you. Therefore, I'll tell you what I will say. So, what, uh, one of the things which you read from the newspaper, it is Good for gossip is that many of the institutions, he means uh, universities, they're all substantive. It's not a revelation. <clears throat> all of us know all these things. But the problem is, why is it happening? Because almost all the Indian universities are modeled after either Oxford or London. Either you are a research university like JMU, Dolan University, or a teaching university like Delhi and other sources of follow the same pattern. But where are they now? Where are we? Why did what happen actually? We were not able to manage these things. So summary of this is that we have a substandard science education. We are worried about science only. But equally it is happening in social sciences and humanities and so that is the one which stimulates. <clears throat> and even recently you see the academic lessons of scientists from students, somebody said that the great warning, be honest. So what is that people are talking about honesty? A sort of pursuit of science is built in integrity, it is because we are want to know the truth. Because things have happened 
which to alarm its signal for people, and therefore the transfer said, at least be honest. It doesn't matter if you don't get no price, be honest in the transfer. Or a lighter mean, another thing that people have noticed, <clears throat> doing research is no more the voyage of discovery, the voyage of joy, there are exceptions for everything. It has become almost like a mental torture for the students, PhD students. And there are articles from Western world that doing PhD means they become a mental patient. It is, of course, making extreme statements, but it tells you the severity of the problem, what, has, what is actually happening in research research. So, on a lighter way, this is a joke. Some research scholars write up, which not. And uh, somebody called Yamaha sister, he was reading punishment. So they said, uh, You are supposed to go to hell. But then you have finished PhD. So we'll take it as a time so. <laughs> We also have heard many such stories. There is a scholar counted suicide in the Utah Institute. For a very silly reason, she gave the draft to her guide. And that fellow didn't correct it. Lo and behold, the girl goes and comes to it. That could be the tipping point. The point is, of why does it happen? So the background is important. Like this, hundreds of cases, hundreds of reforms you have taken. Now there has become a number. People are not sensitive about it. But this problem is much deeper, much more serious. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Let us be very clear about the semantics that we use. There are three terms here moral, law, ethics. Moral is an individual consent driven attitude or behavior. And there is no judicial intervention in this. And morals differ from society to society. In Saudi Arabia, if you commit a robbery or steal something, your hands will be cut. It looks appalling here. Yeah. But that's a law there. So we look at it as a moral. So moral is basically individual to the position. On the other hand, the other extreme, there is something called law. Law is always enacted by a legislative body. Parliament or or something like anything. And from then on, it becomes that everybody has to obey if you are a good citizen. And there is a correction procedure, appealing procedure, judicial intervention. So you can appeal, they can appeal, somebody can arrest you, somebody can fight it. All this comes under law. It's a legal system, as we call it. Ethics is neither moral nor law. Ethics is usually used, this word, in connection with professional groups. You have a group of teachers, you have a group of lawyers, all medical professionals will know we take Hippocratic vote. That is ethics. If you don't follow it, there is no punishment. It is no judicial intervention is not permitted. Therefore, it is also a voluntarily chosen behavior, but the professional group simply obeys. Even a group of robbers, they decide I will not rob that house, there is no rob. That is not a thing. There is no punishment if you don't do it, and there is no judicial intervention. So we should be very clear about semantics. And now we will talk only about professional ethics, that's why it is called professional ethics, of our scientists. Expected social conduct among members of the group, it could be religion, it could be lawyers, it just something. It constitutes what we call as ethics, or sometimes we call it best practices for doing research. A bad social group is not subject to judicial scrutiny and management. Social group, therefore, overtakes individual benefit. That means you can't kill the promotion. By your ambition. That, that is important. <clears throat> How do you recognize an unethical conduct or activity? 
any action, we are not talking about science doing research and all that. Doing an experiment, writing a paper, collecting data, making a claim, giving popular lecture, most of us do, making a selection, giving an award, promoting an individual or a cause. All these are activities within this scientific profession. And which has an intention, if that activity has an intention to cheat the system. So it is only having an intention to cheat. Or some data or publishing something or whatever it is. That becomes essentially unethical activity. But then how the hell you recognize an intention to cheat? You have to have an inquiry and all those things, but it's never done. Which has an intention to cheat the system. Your peers or even an educated layman in the classroom doing popular lecture to make false claims, to exaggerate things, all these are unethical. These are called as unethical activities. Obviously, the desire to cheat has to be proved before you can take any action. Okay. There are no scientific procedures for this. Intelligence prevents any conscious effort to cheat. If you are more of an intelligent person, you will be honest. Dishonesty is the feature of India for years. Please remember it. It becomes a necessity, ethical concern, frankly, for all philosophical, scientific, and even religious investigations, all of which seek truth, whatever may be the definition of that truth. So, wherever you are seeking truth, integrity is there. Guaranteed thing, and it is a first requirement. I will not talk more on religion. That's not our concern. But religion comes under a different thing. It comes of faith. Before nine o'clock, after five o'clock, I'm also a religious person. Faith does not demand logic. Science is based on logic. Therefore, we have to defend ethical behavior and punish unethical behavior because it is unscientific. It could not be. Is there a biological basis for all these things? Yes. In our own country or near home, parrots, and this is an example at Atlantic Hawkins, they choose their mate one per life. In one life per life, you can call it their or good. <laughs> Do you call it moral? Do you call it ethics? Do you call it a law? Obviously, we are wired for this. So there is a biological basis for this. Instead, I must tell you, there is no science of ethics. There is only ethics of science. This is not my statement. Statement made by Karl Popper, the greatest philosopher of science of the past So he said this, that there is no, that means if I want to do this and write a thesis on that, there is no material. It is an assumption. Therefore, these examples will tell us that probably there is a biological basis for moral ethics and all that. Probably we don't. That's why there is a lot of confusion in understanding survival of the fittest. It is not a term used for Darwin, but uh, later on. But there is a misunderstanding of that because we see only bad people succeeding. So that doesn't mean it is a bad thing. More examples will it take? One publisher, 7,000 retractions. So we are not that to print and publish. It is alarming, absolutely alarming. We hear of sexual harassment in many scientific establishments. Till yesterday, this came under the ethics. Today, at least in the civilized society settings, it is not an ethical question, it is a part of the legal system, part of the past, which has allowed. However, in science, academic institutions, there's, it's still an ethical problem. There's no legal procedure for handling Okay. Therefore, that brings us then what exactly ethics of science and ethics in science. The entire process of science has become an enterprise. Any activity which 
affects time, the way it is conducted or the way it is governed, it is all that comes as getting up times, the way you do corrections, whether it is move another hour or some other hour, that procedure and what actually happens in the room, all those talk about getting up signs. Collecting data, publishing, reproducibility, those are all getting in signs. The practice of science, if you don't follow rules, then you say you are science. Science is a human enterprise and highly institutional. We don't do science on one road or others. We have to do it in a department or an institution. And that is where the problem starts. We have no choice. So that is the historical origin of the problem. Any idea, as long as I'm following it as an individual, including saying that to God, as long as it's an idea and it, an individual is doing, there's no harm. It's your private business. But the moment when you make the practice of ideal as an institutional activity, then you establish university departments, research institutions, and say you do research here, doing research is an idea. But when you do it as an institutional mandate, it's no more. It's just like going to temple. You want to pray God, do it privately, let him make noise. But going to temple and doing managing temple is a secular activity. He's worried about finance, budget, and other things. God is no place for that. Exactly the same thing. If you do research in an institutional framework and it becomes an institutional activity, where you have to give fellowship, you have to do select, you have to promote people, you have to find you have to publish there, you should know the editor, all these things, it becomes an institutional pursuit of idea. And that's where the first problem comes. We did not pursue the idea. Because ideas are pursued by internal passion. Here you need management. And therefore, idea gets idea. Therefore, it says that desire for truth leads to ethical practice automatically. But once it is an institutional activity demanding goals, ICR wants progress reports every three months. Then is the time to do research. I'm making extreme statements, but that drives the point here. Therefore, this is more so in value judgment, ranking, towards fighting, examination, correction, and all that. So it's a huge range of issues, activities, ethical concerns, problems. Accountability in the theory activity of science, research, and education alone will ensure ethical decision. It starts from the leader making a decision. If you have ethical concerns, then your decision will be perfect, no problem. Long, long back, Jawaharlal Nehru asked Mahatma Gandhi. How do I make decisions, government decisions, and how did I As in his own style, Gandhi told him to laugh, he said nothing. If this decision helps the poor man, wipe a tear, go ahead and take the decision. Ethical decision. It has nothing to do with any other thing. So if you have that ethical concern for every activity that is accountability, then automatically things will be good. Accountability, therefore, in every activity that will only ensure ethical decision. All activities like conducting exam, writing, teaching, student, teaching, publishing, every damn thing you should have, analyze it from ethical perspective. Then you will see. I think another example and see how confused we are as a nation. I was also familiar with my text as well as that. You see, this net exam, you all of you know, many of you must be in CSF there. The eligibility for lectureship for, for doing doctoral research is the first condition. CSF conducts net exam for science, takes it as something which from which you will get 14,000 or 26,000 of some fellowship, monetary benefit, because you can't do research there on empty stomach. Buddha also is Long Therefore, they said, give him some fellowship, let him not take that. Now everybody is doing it. But you see, you see, it takes certain part of this and says, this is eligible for lectureship. Quality is required to become a lecturer, mental quality is totally different from 
is exactly opposite of what biology is subject. The physics gives you deterministic model for this nature or world. Whereas biology is a stochastic model. Any biological that comes to the sea is not a statistic, it's a probability function. And therefore, the philosophically, these two are opposite. However, chemistry people also follow the physics, and they also got their own food. Biologists, 1700 years, starting from Aristotle. Textbooks always say he is father of this, father of that, and all that. He seems to be father of everything. <laughs> the whole problem with this guy, he never did a single experiment. The father of Alexander the Great, Prince Philip, he gave him a grant, 800, and he used a very strange word, talent. Those days, if you open Bible, you will see talent means cash. Fine. So he got a grant of 800 talent from Prince Philip and he appointed 6,000 little talent. He won't have given permission. The most analytical scientist is Aristotle. <laughs> Published, he wrote on everything. And the point is, no experiment. And it went on for 1700 years. Biologists never did a single experiment. Everything with their eyes, look, later, 17th century, East European people knew how to grind lens. So they got magnified lens. And then from your book, got microscope, all two thousand. And then they started looking at it again with fiction. No question, no answer. Therefore, biology textbooks could have been retested by telephone directly. It would have made any difference. All you know is name of this tree, name of that. Uh, I know that concept. I'm not very clear. It was against the spirit of science. Science is experimental. And the key of this experiment is medicine. Physics, chemistry, biology, now all do only measurement. What do physics people measure? Operation concepts and get an idea about the nature. What do chemistry people measure? Only two things. Transition state temperature, 20 point volume one. And then concentration of solutions. Oh, <laughs> chemistry is good. What do biology people measure? They never measure. But then French people, that condition that if you keep on observing and describing, you will not understand biology. Do some experiment. So from there, they started doing experiment. To do an experiment, you need a method. Till today, biology doesn't have its own method. All techniques and tools have come from physics and chemistry. And now the physics computer science and matter. And therefore, they borrowed these things. Then they started asking questions how does this happen? Open it and see the blood circulation, all sorts of things happen. And then that experimental aspect became, it is now called reductionist biology. So the classical one is the descriptive phenomenal biology, which is another name, natural Reductionist biology reduced biology to physics and chemistry. Now, one the third. All these things came later. Not only that, this railway party also told people what is the use of this science, so called basic science, fundamental science, you will understand nature. What is the use of technology? Science should bring creature comforts. He used the word called man. I can speak one year on the general birthday. He excluded me now. We we'll talk about grand data later. So basically, it should create create a comfort. That means time should be useful. And therefore, from that day, all universities started upgrade zoology, upgrade chemistry, upgrade physics. All departments came only because of the grand data in the French math tradition. So basically, all these people then said science should be useful to society. We no longer use man, it should be useful to society. Okay, so what do you do? Investigation. You have a question, you try to get the answer. And it's the only thing that you do, only one experiment measures it. Biologists measure only in terms of physical parameters or chemical parameters, but there is no biological things to measure. Okay. I'll comment on biosynth later. Um, this measurement, the statisticians have told us that you have to do it with rigor for that. If you know that, if you want to know the truth, 
you have to satisfy this criteria of quality. Quality control. Precision accuracy. Precision specificity. I'm not going to detail this in another classroom lecture. So let us say to satisfy all that. So ultimately, it reduces to science in an art of measurement. That's why when the student does not get the results, the guy will say, go on repeat. He has no patience to analyze. He simply says, do, 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 take you get the results. And therefore, it becomes an art. There many people who are very skilled. Bench work is very good. They may not have anything here, but they are extremely good. That means they are reproducible results. That is the essence of science. Your results should be reproducible. And therefore, we always say science is an art of measurement. However, having praised science so much because we are practically scientists, let us also know the limitations of science. We have already made a statement that faith, like religion and other things, they don't demand logic, whereas science is, has to be on the foundation of logic. But you ask a simple question Have you validated the logic that you are using? No. Nowhere. The only person who validated logic was the Indian system. There was a, a big Swami B, not now, three centuries back, Madhuraja in Guruji. He, his system, which is called the Sanskrit Sakatasra, there he has validated logic. Even American textbooks of logic spoke this one. Whereas the Western logic which we are following, it has never validated. And we have a dig at uh, Geometry lessons which you have uh, learned in the school, totally illogical. So that's what we learn. Okay. Logic is not helpful that we try to establish the sole reliability. That's why people mention that if I am a rational person and if I take only rational decisions, will it give rational conclusions? There's no guarantee. That rational thinking will give us all solutions. And lead us to understand the faith. This is my statement. Science deals with what is measurable. What you can't measure, science cannot do. Okay? Who said all this? One of the great astrophysicists was Sarah Eddington. At one time, he was considered better than Einstein. But he made that statement that logic has a limitation. Therefore, scientific truth also has a limitation. That's why we now. Take it very seriously, all our results and hypotheses and predictions and all that. We go to an extreme definition of science, truth of science, given by Karl Popper. We call it Popperian logic. Here it says that non falsifiable knowledge is not science. The Britisher, double negative. He would have said it in one positive, that is a great conclusion. Non falsifiable science is not science mean, all science is false. Such dangerous. In every paper that we publish, in every experiment that we do, you also give a thought experiment or a probable experiment by doing which you can falsify your results. Until you do that, that is not science exists. That's the extreme definition of science. That is the faith in the reproducibility of that. Okay. Science, therefore, is a new philosophy of life seeking truth in structure and function of this nature. Experimental natural philosophy or natural science, the product of the I already told, it limits questions to material world. We don't ask supernatural questions, what is the height of God? It is not asked with science. Today, now in Europe, it limits its questions only to this material world, nature, we call it, including the environment. There's a biosphere. No supernatural principle or phenomena is addressed. Revelation is not a scientific method. The whole of Quran is a revelation by God or messenger of God in the years of Muhammad's grace. That method is not a scientific method. We don't admit it. That's why when you say he is a noble and he is saying something, he can. You don't have to believe it. Or your teacher is saying something, you don't have to believe it. Question. That is why revelation is not there. You don't have a received wisdom in science. You heard it out. All right. 
Many people like Francis Bacon, I mentioned, where I can say that he has gone to great philosopher of 19th century. Bernard Russell, from the Carl Popper, our school, and others, defined science and explained it. It does not demand faith. You don't have to believe in it, including your teacher. On the other hand, faith does not demand love. If there is anything ethics, as I said, there is no science of ethics, but there is ethics of science. If there is only one ethics that is proper, and that is ethics of excellence. You have to promote excellence, recognize excellence, that is ethical. Scientists work for recognition, and not for discovering the truth. And making some bitter statements, don't take it 100%. There are always exceptions. But this only by talking like that you will understand the danger of the exam. No award, honor, decision, selection, including the prize, but not the original. Some of us are sad in this country, we will never get any. Because there is no fear that this fellow is best. There is no fear. There is no way to know that. That's why I am quoting Balram. We can't measure so called quality, but what is measurable is we make it very important. In fact, that's it. It's a surrogate monster. Okay. At best, it is based on consensus, it's very good political decision. And at worst, it is acrimonious, which means good judgment. Compare them is inevitable whenever measurement is undertaken. This is the problem with science. If I ask you what is your height, you can take an step and tell me and I'm five, six or six, one or whatever it is. But your sentence is not over. You will say I'm taller than that one. I did ask you. Comparison is the inevitable when you do measurement. That's the danger here. Okay. One can only measure quantifiable parameters. Quality, significance of scientific work is not a quantified term. History will change. A truly great research finds finding stands the test of time and becomes part of society's cultural numbers. Okay, I don't go into details. It's a beautiful book, the sociological analysis of science. She is a professor in Harvard University, one of her She has written a book. I will not make it more provocative. What went on in IIT Madras for long years, even now it is going on. We have made merit as a test. So still there is test problems. Because you can't, can't define merit by any quantitative term. It's a qualitative thing. There is another book with all of the show credits. It was originally written by the word. It's uh, now re edited by. Very complicated title. Science is greater than Einstein. See why comparison of this? Because we consider Einstein to be a genius. And here he says, because the parameter is different. Your work, how many tiers it has five? How many people it has affected? You understand? Therefore, if you take that criteria, Einstein does not figure in this. There are many people, I will not read the book. One example I tell you, penicillin was discovered by Alexander Fleming. No doubt. He was a perfect scientist actually. The next year I was working on Sanjay, the sports came here, but he kept the window open. And he discovered that and he was a brilliant fellow. But it wouldn't have been useful as an injection, as an antibiotic, unless Lori and Chain showed that it is a wonder drug. Magic bullet or whatever, magic bullet is around here. Even then, it was not called the Nobel Prize. That's the different thing. During World War II, lot of American soldiers were dying more by infection to the wounds and other things. And they wanted medicine because people said it is a wonder drug. Incidentally, it is not a wonder drug. It's not a prospect of antibiotic. The man who discovered the first broad spectrum antibody is the other one who was born. He didn't get out of there. He made tons of penicillin to supply to American government so that the soldiers can be saved. 
He didn't get anything. He discovered ATP two years before Lona. He didn't get carbohydrate. He advocated dietary carbohydrate for tropical stew. He never was a diet of that. No longer that. He is the one who discovered ATP in 1998. Precursor, I mean, 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 I one point that you must uh, understand creativity is all over uh, from Prime Minister down, everybody is talking, including the laboratory. But the Indian scientists are not creative. So innovation is the new one, and therefore everybody has to be innovative. Unfortunately, if you really analyze basic science and how we do research, you need intelligence to do basic science, to solve problems in science. Innovation, creativity comes in technology and engineering and in performing us. You have seen musicians, whatever, America, anybody, they can spend three hours on one raga. Uh, that is creativity. And science, you don't need creativity. You better be intelligent. Intelligent means convergent thinking. The problem should crack when you analyze it. Whereas art, Performing arts, art, technology, engineering, architecture, there you have imagination. Therefore, that is creativity. So, this word creativity, innovation is being wrongly used for science. Whole nation is doing it. I'll give an example just to make you believe this. If I take 10 genius arbitrarily from history, look at the names, eight of them are from non science. There are only two scientists who figure. Albert Einstein and our own Satyendra Bose. Why is that? You all know Lord Buddha, most intelligent human being, or not. Because of great painter, if you are a few of them, Arvindo is an internal yoga person who settled in the body of the past. The man who talked about super consciousness, Mozart is a great prodigy, some of you know, just from music. Thomas Alva Edison, great inventor, he had 800 patients. Dave Einstein and Satyadana Bose, no Chomsky is the linguist. Perfect, Antarctic linguist is also a partition. Isaac Newton, I don't have to tell. Michael Angelo is a man who painted Vatican Eastern Church. Whenever you go to Rome, you see the extraordinary things. Or Leonardo da Vinci, any one of the fantastic. They are the genius people, so we use the word creativity only for them. Basic science of the highest quality, then you become creative. Because if you ask Einstein, how did you get this? If you ask Ramanujan, how did you get this? They won't be able to ask. It was a creative process that came. Same thing goes. So that makes us that we don't have to worry if Prime Minister says that you are not creative. You can't create unless they're cooking them. You can't create it. Normal science requires intelligence to solve problems. I mentioned this. Intelligence is competent thinking, convergent thinking. Creativity is divergent thinking. I mentioned I talked about something. So if you do only the highest quality basic science, and you can remember only Charles Darwin, or in physics, Max Planck, or Einstein. Only those people you can call them the creative genius. This word should not be used for anybody. For every other student, he gives character to He is a genius. The wrong usage of all this. Technological creation remains in public memory. I don't have to tell you all these things. Many inventions have shaped our life. I only give a couple of examples. That's not fine. Does this mean we ignore basic science? No. You have to support basic science. You have to look at science as part of education. That is where I have opposition to all the research institutions here. There is no educational context. Research without education 
Einstein said it. Don't quote me. It's meaningless. Okay. Science is at the heart of education. You have to be over 5,000 years. You have forgotten the name of education. And now those details from 5,000 years back, where the ancient civilizations of China, Middle East, Egypt, ourselves, we had certain aim for education. It was always told in very profound words. To increase the consciousness of the individual human being to its highest potential. They don't understand, you don't understand. Maybe. So basically, therefore, that was the aim of education. Later, we got the uh, Britishers. And if you read uh, the speech that uh, Lord Macaulay gave in British Parliament in 1834, very clear speech, the racist. He said, You can't control this uh, Indian unless we create good administrators. And therefore, British education was basically to create clubs. Okay, so we got the universities, we got the colleges, and all. later we will have it. I don't know. 1000 universities we have, but the colleges we have. There is the problem. Right. Therefore, the aim of education became clear. And one day in 1947, we suddenly got educated. People Always give credit to Mahatma Gandhi and others. But I feel that Britishers are the best of us. They gave us freedom. Once we got freedom, we had to think what type of education we want. There was only one fellow who was thinking, Jawaharlal Nehru. So he made the thing that education should create middle class. Good lawyers, good engineers, good uh, doctors, or good, good, good people. Especially engineering, he had a very fond hope because all the housing board houses and roads, we know the condition. So he said, This is not good. Let us have a quality engineering education. So he started five ideas. Extraordinary good idea, whatever the group did, great institutions came. A lot of care was taken. But did it benefit India? 95% of IIT products went to export. And the remaining 5% went to Ahmedabad and got IIM and sold to this. <laughs> they are managers. And therefore, IIT education did not benefit this country. That's how our engineering projects, our bridges, and our buildings are still in that point. Okay. Research funding. I told you there are many issues I'm talking randomly. What actually results is not institutional growth and all the funding that we are talking now, but the empires are built. There is a book by Arthur Tesla, who is a European thinker. He wrote a book called Act of Creation. Every one of you can read that. He's a hopeless uh, romantic fellow. He came to Kerala and fell in love with uh, the Mariali poet. Who changes religion every year? This year she is Hindu, next year she is Christian, another year Islam, and all that. And she rejected. Promptly went back to Europe and committed suicide. But we are not remembering for that. The extraordinary thinker, he wrote what exactly creativity and all that. Now, when you, in the context of funding, when we fund the individual, this is a phrase he used. What we create is academic aristocrats in the university system who don't take class. Because they think doing research is the only aim of professors. You should not even enter the lab. That's the problem. And therefore, institutional growth will not happen. That's what happened if you look at uh, post independent 70 years of funding. Of course, earlier there it was nothing. After the 80s, all this uh, task force, uh, committee, trust area, all this came, PSP, and all. So funding became mega project, a very part of them. All these things came. But did the institutions develop? No. Individual developed. So we had academic aristocrats who created these things. Therefore, we say it's difficult to fund the institutions, but not individuals. I have spoken in funding agencies also. I wrote the data for 
Yes, sir. There is something called conflict of interest. Most of us have heard when we sit in committees and other things. It's a very serious matter, an ethical issue. That's why what we have summarized all this thing is then this science. Western science, as we call the experimental science, investigative science. We got it through colonial rulers. It was not there in the game. You can read many books which claim we have done that, we have done that, all this is all We had theoretical science. We were very good in mathematics. We were very good in astronomy. Unfortunately, it has become astronomy. And therefore, it is open science. There is no science there. The experimental science, we never, even Europeans are not guilty of that. 1700 years, I said, no, no biologist did any experiment. Right. So basically, that's okay. But what happened when universities started, research institutions started, and all that, there is one social phenomenon which most of you might have observed. It is only the middle class which occupied all this. When the universities opened, colleges opened, education is a middle class privilege to get out of poverty line. And therefore, Middle class has one great feature. They want security. So I want a job. I don't want work. That is middle class. And therefore, when middle class dominated the entire scientific establishment, education institution, and all, what you got is a different criteria for success. That is, I want award, I want this, I want that, and all that. And that's why for the first time I started to say something sensible. All that 95 percent, what we wrote and uh, after is nonsense. For a change, he said, dignity in life is deserving an honor, but not in possessing it. Don't worry about all these things. Do your research, do your work, automatically history will be better than that. And when you don't do that, unethical things come. But it is a joke. People like said middle class, therefore they want job. Where do you get careers for all these PhDs and all that? There are only three spheres. There is the last, biggest one in the university system. I don't talk about it. The RD institutions for ministries, like this one. And there is a third one which uh, nobody knows anything. They themselves don't know what they're doing. This is called strategic sphere. Defense, space, other there. No editing. They don't know what they're doing, that's what they think. Of course, our space agents have done that much for you. Here you are eligible for employment. I'm talking to MSc students and PhD students as well. Therefore, one should see here. But actually, in practice, what happened was there is a mismatch between the institutional mandate and the manpower they are recruiting. It happened in teachers or students there as a scholar. Or it happens kind of B or C or B or whatever. There is a mismatch, I'm talking mostly for university system, between mandate and manpower on both positive and negative sides. There is explosion, there is explosion of mediocrity, and there is an implosion also, excessive funding for a non-existent research area. All this has happened. On the end, I won't repeat all that. There is another thing that has happened in the social context. Excellence in science is achieved only based on what kind of society you are rooted in, grounded in. If the general society is unscientific, that country, that society cannot produce high class science. We can see this in all the third world countries. There is a pathological destruction of the university system of the academic work, culture, both by inclusion. And by education. Therefore, these things we talk under a topic called science and society, ethics is also part of it. To take a very simple thing like guide, all of us are researchers, I was a research guide, some of you are here, and we use a word called mentor for the guide. It's not a book, it's a very serious word. And so when the student comes and wants to join somebody, he also should do some homework. There are four types of mentors, or right, what we call. So, if you want to join a rock star scientist who publishes high impact at the general paper very frequently, it's very significant work. 
Therefore, you should also have the mental qualities matching that. Otherwise, you will commit suicide. This is the origin of analytical thinking. Ambition, greed, overtakes competence. So, the student also has to learn, understand in whom I should work. It should not be guided by only greed. That if you join here, I will get a dozen papers in a year. But you not work. I told you, middle class doesn't want to work, you want the job. Therefore, if the student makes a decision properly, there will be no question of analytical thing. Because whenever the guide demands something, if you start cooking up your results and fool the guide, fool yourself, fool the society, and publish wrong things, miserable things, you know what will happen. Retraction will come. Therefore, there is also many of us stays in your career, some of you. Some dilemma and it creates an ethical problem to decide shall I do basic work or shall I do applied work? It is all not due to individual, it's due to wrong policies or let us say confusing policies coming from headquarters. You understand? For a long time, people were telling all the universities that the universities were major source of research that you publish or you perish. And then we got a great man from Mashallah. Yes, and he gave a new mantra to patent or perish. So everybody started patenting. Because whatever the policy says, I will do my cover, put my science into that. So this individual driven passion and interest and all that managed. People did either to publish or to perish. Of course, now we are very confused. You can publish, you can patent and still perish. <laughs> That's what we are saying now. Applied work versus translation work. There's a passion to do translation, no doubt on that, but competent people should take it. If only it comes as a product promoter, it never translates into a product, not marketable product. Teaching versus research. This seems to be a very high confusion for many people. They are not mutually exclusive. Both are required. Professional work versus exclusive passion. There are contract research now. So you tell me what to do, I will teach it and teach it. I have no interest in that work. That is called professional function. Many people are doing it. Local versus globally important work. This is a confusing thing which many people are using it to confuse people. There is nothing called Indian science, French science, Spanish science, and American science. There is nothing. Science is global. If your problem that you are addressing, if question is addressing is globally important, that is global science. If I am talking about something is happening in the back door of my house, that is not great science. So the confusion that we should do only Indian type of work, that we should do only that type of work, is all absolutely semantic level. There is no meaning in all that. What is important is are you asking an important question? Significant work will come. If you finish that, otherwise it's an unimportant separate also that type of work. These are the things that have led to unethical. If you see the taxonomy paper, they will say the first report for my age. What is so great about it? Has been reported already from 100 places. No, from my village is the first one. This is the, this is the kind of a pseudo greatness that we are very fond of. That's what happened. Now we have talked about this. Where are the ethical issues coming here? There is the animal ethics and biomedical research. I don't have to tell you. And for that, it's still alive. <coughs> In the head, the CBSC number. But before CBCSCA, in some we wrote guidelines around the ethical and animal. I'm sure you can see. I'm sure. And this is a big problem, especially in biological research. Institutions, animal ethics committees, some of them are very activists. One of them I faced, he said, I'll close your animals. I said, you try. But I, I won't mention the name. Whatever it is, the whole point is, these have created ethical problems. It is true, some scientists are also not anti animals. In a humane way, that's all they agree. Many of the people, one of my seniors in PhD days used to kill rats by his 
Stati Uniti. Now, another thing that comes to is the system. That's why we got out this ethical group and we should follow it with the ethical group. Development versus environmental health, they don't uh, discuss all this. It's around the development of politics. There are environmental activists and uh, heroes who will object to any industry, any manufacturing sector because it is pollution. Of course, they will talk in terms of conservation by the state. Different factors, but there it seems to be an ethical problem. In that. One thing common in all these, whenever you have a problem, just be specific at the table and talk, which you don't. We take adversarial position, whether it is India, Pakistan, or husband and wife, and therefore we will never come to resolution. We only know how to oppose. You can see how the value is. One day she will oppose herself. <laughs> The whole point is this mental state that I don't want to discuss the problem, come to conclusion, that is creative. It is also an understanding behavior. We encounter many of these things in all these discussions and in the Failure creates some social Maybe a of data, very serious thing. Unfortunately, your computer fellows will tell you you have developed the software. You just give me your thesis and tell you what percentage of plagiarism is there. But if you don't understand, this is one of plagiarism. If I steal your idea, there is no software. People don't think at all. Perfect? There is no copycat research. Obviously, you can uh, camouflage it nicely, but it is somebody else's idea. Plagiarism data I already mentioned. Nurturing academic academic purpose reading career. Science, as I said, is a middle class thing, and therefore we are more interested in becoming a career, making our career, rather than pursuing my research, my passion, whatever we do. Every lecturer wants to become vice chancellor within a period of three years. How do you do this? You want to go up the ladder so fast to get into an ethical. That's what happened. Published patent that I already said it. One example, this is for mostly understanding also, because you don't have opinion. When you teach evolution, obviously Indians by default, they teach uh, Darwinian thing. But there are a couple of states in the USA who teach creation demands, purely as a philosophical problem, including us, if you do origin of species, origin of life, we must. Introduce and discuss all aspects, but criticize those which cannot be verified. And therefore, you can dismiss the religious idea. But without doing that, don't say this is the only thing which is right. Today, we know we have modified Darwinism also. There are other mechanisms of uh, selection without what he was talking about. Right. So, that's the ethical problem because how do I do it? So, many people, students always keep asking me and provoking me. Do you believe in God? I said yes. Before night, I have a sector. I believe. In between, no. Okay. So we should be very careful in discussing some of these things. People talk about innovation, but do really innovation is thing? There was a, 10 years back, there was a proposal to start a national innovation university. There was a meeting in the UGC also. I was also there. So we were discussing, discussing what is this innovation university at all. On the third day, we got a news that the parliament has already passed the bill. So this company has no deal. Okay? That is the innovation we are talking. But actually, in practice, what we have is regard technology, not any great technology, including IT. I skip this because it is a research institution. But uh, must repeat this. There are, of course, uh, I mentioned already, there are thousand universities in our country. The latest uh, universities of the topic of the cultural information. They have made this out. But you have varieties of that open universities, closed universities, green universities, blue universities, <laughs> state universities, central universities, innovative universities, multi class universities. 
They don't sell very next to the airport. <laughs> we have many of these. Total count 1000. But if you ask top 100 in the world, how many years? Okay. We have 40,000 colleges in the country. It's really miserable to look at the quality of science education. I will not go into detail. The Karnataka government appointed a committee and I was there. We gave a very good report on how to do science education. I already have another presentation there following those people in the news. That's why Einstein said it's a very interesting story. It's a miracle that we have been covered in formal education. We admit ourselves and make them run this. He says. I will skip this. This is the impact of national education. I told you what from Dalhousie on the spot there. From lying, you should remember. Colonial rulers started schools and colleges where vernacular language was the medium of instruction. Whereas we have this impression that colonial rulers destroyed our indigenous thing. No. Look at all these rules and regulations I have data. Whereas Indian Dalindas opened the maximum English medium school for the state of Singapore. People forget all these things and blame the British for all this. Okay? There are a lot of ethical dimensions in this we will not bother for you. Both guided students should be seekers in the solution. Necessary financial support should be provided and created. I don't like people doing PhD without fellowship. It's an ethical problem. Ask you to be a replacement of anything you want. You want a wholesome personality to come out of that. It is not like uh, Steve Jobs. People will become mad. It's not a role model. Don't do it. You must enjoy. Doing research is a joy. If you don't enjoy, if you're not enjoying, quit. There was one slide on that, but don't do that for your own lives. It is mean, take your job and salary. Unless my tummy is full, I will not be able to take it. All right. I have talked enough of this. I will skip all this because uh, I made us to be. It is more about the uh, more about benefiting the person who has contributed. More about the uh, applied work, not the basic work, all that the issues are there, governments. I'm not going to with all this. This is safety, chemistry labs. Without making any name, one university started a very big, what they call incubating. Why I suppose all that? It was mostly based on chemistry, all the things that were going on. And that guy came to me and said, that, Sir, you must see our facility. We have this, we have that. We built a big museum. So I went there. It's supposed to be a chemistry lab. There's only one door. There's not very any arrangement for fire accidents or any explosion. That is the kind of safety lab. It shows, I think they have no concern for the ethics here. It's only a museum to build things. You go to any old university, look at chemistry lab, big doors, two doors, name them. One to run away, one to the day. You can't have it. What we have is air conditioned lab. So, therefore, some of these are basically done that. It's an ethical problem. You are working for student safety. On the PA also, any worker, safety is important. So, people who design labs must be concerned about personal safety. And also the infrastructure safety. Therefore, it is an ethical problem. There is nothing to do with it. any other thing. Of course, the uh, good Friday by share on this, non sharing of published material, many unnecessary things. So we are not talking because we have come very far from the Indian data that knowledge has to be free. Don't take patents. But we have learned bad tricks from militants, not of it. And one of them is this, making money out of knowledge. Okay. Uh, I skip all these things. Artificial intelligence is what it has created. Uh, 
That was wonderful. If you have, we can take one or two questions ethically, not unethically. <laughs> we can take some. I have not made any exaggeration. Some of it sounds like that. But the disease has spread enormously now. I'll just ask one question. You started with substandard. Who defines standard? I mentioned, uh, I made two statements damaging, of course. All universities in India, without any exception, are modern after Oxford and London. So the aims are very lofty and very high. I mentioned again that if you take, by whatever criteria, we can question the criteria and the methodology. To take top 100, I think we see no Indian, including Indian Institute of Science, doesn't see that. And if you forget all those things, look at the university system where education is getting there, that's it. I'm talking only science education, I'm not talking English literature. This feeling by all surveys, there are quantitative surveys to be done. For example, how much a eight class student should know in mathematics? So you have some. Exercise and find out. By such method, we take it investigations. It is generally remarked that the majority of our institutions are substandard as far as science education. For example, I always exaggerated a few days. We teach science play poetry. Science has to be experienced. There should be only practical. In the initial days of biotechnology, 57 universities had there was no lab. Believe it or not. It's only DVD has to come and rescue them and give some money and they build museums. Whole problem is we have misunderstood science. That is why we have. Now, what is the teaching? There are always exceptions, good teachers are always there. That's not the point. The exchange of second hand information is not teaching. You transfer your experience. And therefore, you construct that subject domain knowledge. From your experience and represent it to this student and bring them up to what is known. This is unknown. Don't do this. How many people do that? One textbook, therefore, 40 years of experience with 40 years of production. That's all. There's nothing new here. That is why we are here. I'm giving very strong statement. There are great teachers, and there are great labs, great institutions. The general is that it's substantial. By some criteria, as I said, you should know how to multiply two into two for a given standard, a class. If you can't do it, the people standard is low. If I if I can add, um, aren't the standards different slightly at least for different cultures? Sure, that goes for your IQ also. That's why we don't now believe in IQ tests and all that. These are all influenced by culture. I'll give you my own experience. In 19, I started you know, I don't know, 76. So 77, we were admitting students to MSc. Enter for them and then some interview. Only 10 students, a lot of people. One student was not able to answer anything. But I sensed there's something wrong. So I 
on the chair of Jesus at that time. Do you mind if I speak to him and tell you? Go ahead, unless you are telling me lies. Okay, I believe you, he said. Condescend him. <laughs> I asked that boy in Telugu, he answered all the questions. Sir, if you trust me, he knows everything. So selected. Now comes your step. This is the concept which defines what we call bright student. Opportunity is what converts people into bright or anything. Intelligence is only practice of repetitiveness. There is nothing called intelligence. De novo, there doesn't come. Past experience, practice. That's why I am saying. These are all analytical things. I told you about Einstein's selection of other things. How can a fish go up the tree? But then the example should take away your step. Hi, sir. Uh, today, uh, your thoughts uh, while gave me some needle prick along with that, it also gave me uh, warmth or comfortable feeling of the field. So my question is, when I just mentioned about Mamta energy and the opposition. No, don't take it up. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, many a time, they said there is also a ethical in a popular lecture. You become flamboyant and then utter something just to make the situation less grim. So now, you give serious research seminars, people get headache. <laughs> <That's what laughs> so now, uh, my question is actually not political at all. Not because oh, I asked this okay, question, okay. I was born in Bengal, not that. <laughs> <laughs> no, my yes. question is this philosophy of opposition. Mean, <coughs> is it not science? that tells us to oppose to our own belief system. Let's say I'm doing an experiment with an expectation. Go I get a different result. So yeah. I oppose myself and take a, 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 go forward with another expectation. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, That's why in philosophy and science, if you read all the people who have great people have said it, science is a self-correcting mechanism. Right. Even if I publish a rotten paper, open up result, somebody is going to find out. Of course, it's an expensive and you know, it takes time for all that. So, science, there's no danger of pursuing wrong things or you know making a falsehood as true. It is a self-correcting measure. Yeah. But this you don't see in other things. That doesn't mean even the way we, for example, take education institutions. When a teacher is giving a lesson or something, nobody asks questions. Because our cultural tradition said, don't question the guru. Always at the field. I don't know. But, but this is not as some of in our culture as well has been told to ask questions. That system means Absolutely right from right. Buddhist. That's why this is a confusing thing that we are getting. If you read original Indian literature, philosophical literature, Sanskrit literature, Indology literature, all the Vedic practices and all, Yajna Mahavidya, you have read, questioning is what is they are asking. In yeah. fact, when we have, for example, you must have heard of. One college in Benares, it gives you the title of Telugu, and the method is done like this it is by argument. The fellow who says something is called Vada, there is somebody to oppose him, it is called Pratibhada, and there is somebody else who will always confuse both of them, that is called Vidanda Vada. <laughs> Our party issues with that. This is a system which was developed to prove you are right. And that fellow is wrong. That's how all the religious schools started. One set of Upanishads and Badranas, Brahma Sutra, there are 28 commentaries. Each one is so different. That shows Sanskrit is a lousy language. 28 interpretations. Kandara, Madhva, Pallava, Chaitanya, all. Anyway, I don't want to confuse you all that. We have to have semantic clarity. <coughs> Thank you. 
Wonderful talk, wonderful lecture, and you are sorry, I took you. No, no, you, no, 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 it's fine. But it, it, you are still leaving the audience consisting of very, very juniors to you, students and uh, faculty, who are all like your students, faculty also, uh, leaving them up to their imagination what they would drive from this wonderful. Very mind-boggling talk, and under the same ethical consideration, I am very sure people will make their own conclusions and will try to live with it, which suits them, and get away with it. I request you that you please give a statement that what a good scientist, whether it's a student. Or its faculty should ideally do to follow based on the ethics for research field. If you give a statement, I think that will be a written statement. For example, I will give you one example that if you ask me this question, I will, for example, give a very bold answer: a man who is most responsible, whatever is the definition of responsibility. Or responsible. In all probability, he will be doing most of the things ethically. For example, so this is no, my my yeah my I small. <laughs> yes, sir. This is my small kind of input, but your input will be much much greater. I want I request you to give a statement that if you want to do ethically good research, what should you practice? See, the first thing is, first I tell you. Problems trying to do good work. Whether we like it or not, the science we are doing is essentially colonial people who gave us. Right? There was no experimental science in any country, civilization before this European scale. It is a result of nature, and therefore it is like this. I am. I have not bought a car. I still don't know how to drive. Therefore, I am. Learning how to drive, marketer, operator. But once I become an expert in that, then you start a course in automobile engineering. Don't start PhD work on driving when you don't even know where is the steering. Very much correct. In other words, we are learning experimental science. Seventy years is nothing. 
Chemistry University as the chair of public understanding of science policy. This is nothing with us to We need that in every university. We are related to the society that has nurtured us, tax money. So we are responsible for that, we are accountable for it. That's where ethics will come. If I feel I am not accountable to anybody, no ethics. So the whole procedure of doing research, admitting students, guiding them, who should guide, how many. There are people who have produced 100 PhDs, no names. How the hell can you do this 100 PhDs? Do you remember their names? I won't talk about it. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. That was a wonderful uh, talk. So uh, now we have outside snacks and tea are there for you. Help yourself. Thank you very much. Give him a big applause.